got beautiful grand design, spiral structure, nice two arms. It's nicely face on so you can see it all. It's got a little companion, so it's got a little bit of interest there. It's just a beautiful galaxy. It's a relatively nearby galaxy, which I guess is the other plus side to it, which means it's fairly large on the sky, so actually you can take spectacular pictures. It's actually, do you want to know where it is, if you know where Ursa Major, the plough, is, if you think this is the shape of the saucepan, it's actually just below the handle, so it's actually uh, up in the northern sky. Also, for a Messier object, is one of the ones that Messier himself discovered. So he found the M51, and then his, his friend Machon found this little companion galaxy as well. So they have different NGC numbers, so they are actually different galaxies and they're classified as such, but in the Messier catalogue it's just catalogued as a single object. It's a classic spiral galaxy, grand design, so grand design just means you can trace the spiral structure over a large fraction of the, of the face of it and it clearly has this beautiful symmetry to it. The companion fascinates me there because that looks like it could be something behind it or in front of it, but that's like, that's sort of on the same plane. It clearly is physically associated with it and in fact it's what's responsible for the beautiful grand design spiral structure. It is the interaction, gravitational interaction between this little friend and the galaxy which leads to that beautiful grand design spiral structure. If you want really beautiful spiral structure, you need something constantly stirring it up. Uh, you can have spiral structure in relatively isolated galaxies, but it tends to be rather messier. It's only when you have that nearby companion to kind of stir things in a very coherent fashion that you tend to get that grand design spiral. We've actually made a video about spiral structure before for uh, 60 symbols about pattern speeds and things and I talked about density waves and so on but actually there's a, there's a sort of simpler way to understand it in the case of this galaxy related to what this little companion galaxy is doing. Here's a nice face on galaxy, un unperturbed galaxy and in an unperturbed galaxy all the gas and stars go around more or less in circular orbits but when you've got a companion gravitationally interacting with it that can start disturbing those orbits and distorting them. And the simplest kind of distortion you can get is just basically the orbits just get stretched a bit. And then the second thing that can happen is that the orbits can actually then get kind of pulled around. And so you can see that these are actually, the, the ellipses here are exactly the same as the ellipses here. All I've done is move them so that they actually progressively rotate round as you work your way outwards. And you can see just those two things of stretching the orbits and then rotating them round just automatically produces a beautiful two-arm spiral structure. And what you're actually seeing is you can see, if you imagine the material just traveling around on these orbits, it's essentially undisturbed traveling around on these orbits, but sometimes lots of the orbits come very close together where the spiral arms are. And if you were thinking about the gas in a galaxy, that means that those are places where all the gas gets squeezed together. And when you compress the gas, that's when stars will start to form. And so the reason why those spiral arms are lit up with beautiful young stars is because that's the places where all those gas crowds are crashing into each other and being squeezed together and causing star formation. And that actually gets around one of the big problems in understanding spiral structure, which is that if you look at a galaxy, all the material is going around at more or less the same speed. And so if you did have a, a spiral structure at some point, um, and then you were to kind of run the clock forward, so travel forwards in time, what you'd find is that all the material would continue orbiting around, but because the stuff at the outside is going at the same speed as the stuff at the inside, it would get left behind. It's like if you were running a, a long race where everyone was made to stay in lanes, the people in the outside lanes would soon get laps and laps behind because they got much further to go. So exactly the same thing would happen here. So a beautiful spiral structure would very quickly get wound up because all the stuff on the inside would be whizzing around before this stuff outside had travelled hardly any distance at all. So you can't make spiral structure persist if it's really just a whole load of, of light bulbs lit up because they'll just very quickly get all wound up and disappear. Whereas it's not, in, in this case, this can just stay there forever because the stars can go around these orbits at whatever speed they want and the gas can go around at whatever speed they want. And it's only just when those orbits all come close together that you end up producing the, producing the star formation and, and kind of lighting up these spiral arms when you do that. Another way of thinking about these things is it's much more like um, one of those traffic jams you sometimes get on the motorway where, which is there for no apparent reason. Probably there was an accident hours and hours ago and suddenly all the traffic slows down and then speeds up again. It's not always the same cars in that slow moving part. In fact, cars come along and then they slow down and they speed up when they come out the other side. And so that's, that's another form of kind of density wave. And that's exactly what's going on here, that the material just gets squeezed up together at some points and then expands out again out the other side. So every piece of gas, every object in a galaxy will get its turn in the spiral arm? Pretty much, yeah. Does that mean the spiral arms move? So that's the final complication in this story, is that actually if you follow the orbit of a star around, it doesn't really go around in an ellipse like that. If you actually do a calculation of what the orbit does, it actually goes around in a pattern rather more like this. So that there is kind of an ellipse as it goes around, but the ellipse itself is moving, so the ellipse is rotating around. So you can think of it as travelling around an ellipse, but that ellipse itself is kind of processing around. If all these ellipses, were processing at different speeds, 
then this beautiful pattern will get destroyed very quickly because I've, you know, it's only because the ellipses are aligned in this very particular way that you end up with a spiral structure. If they all started processing, that would then go away. The magical thing about spiral structure is that when you calculate the precession speed of all these orbits, you find that they're all the same. That's how spiral structure gets generated. It's, it's in the case where you can have all those ellipses processing at the same speed. And that precession, so if you can think about it, you can think about the stars going around and then the ellipse itself is rotating. And that rotation of the ellipse is the spiral structure rotating as well. And because all the ellipses process at almost exactly the same speed, that means the spiral structure does persist and it doesn't stay completely stationary, it does rotate. But it does mean that the speed at which the spiral structure is going around, which is the speed at which this ellipse is processing, is nothing at all to do with how fast the material is travelling around, because it could be whizzing around these ellipses and then the ellipse can be processing very slowly. So what the companion's doing is it's the thing that's tugging all the orbits around. So it's the, the, the catalyst which is re, you know, squ squashing the orbits and rearranging them to produce the spiral structure. And you can see it has to be responsible, right, because the spiral arms are clearly kind of almost connected with it. So there's two different rotation speeds. There's a rotation speed at which material is travelling around these orbits and there's the rotation speed at which those ellipses are processing and hence the pattern itself is rotating. And typically at most radii in a galaxy the stars are travelling faster and that's why everything gets its chance in the sun because the pattern's going around but the stars and gas get to catch up with it because they're travelling faster, travel through the arm and then come out the other side. If you've got some extra questions, well you're not alone there, I certainly had a few. There's even more from this interview available, check out the links on the screen and in the video description. The Milky Way has arms. It does. How many arms does it have? Two or three. <laughs> We're not in the arm? We are sort of in a little spur of an arm. So there is an arm relatively close to us, but actually we're not in an arm ourselves. Are we on the way in or on the way out of an arm? 